Hey, welcome back for another Fat Guys at the Movies. Right. Here, here at Frank Theaters in Conway, South Carolina, just watched Bullet to the Head. And I, well, I guess I guess what I want to say is, you know, yeah, the, the we'll usual Stallone about, dialogue. We'll yeah. talk about some of that dialogue as yeah. we get into the review, yeah. but... Uh, I do want to say that it was a, a nice, uplifting experience not to have to deal with a Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> uh, so uh, anything yeah. is going to yes. top Hansel yes, and Gretel. Still to, my, still, to my opinion, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. and uh, to, uh, to, to those of you who uh, reviewed our review of Hansel and Gretel, we stick by it. I'm, <laughs> 100%. Yeah. You know what, not only do we stick by it, yeah. read the internet reviews, go to Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, did it ever give, above, wow. did it ever give above 7%? I have to look that up, but I know the first weekend is rating was at seven yeah. percent, which is like an all time low for that website. But so. but I will say it was number one at the box office and it was a lackluster box office, but it still made nineteen million dollars in January. That's uh, reality shows still get ratings yeah. that side yeah. Of me, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well we're gonna find out this week if Stallone can break the poor box office performance of his two buddies. Uh, Jason Statham, who did $7 million his opening weekend, and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, who did $6.9 million his opening weekend. We're going to see if he can well, break, the, I do, break I do, the trend. I do think it's kind of interesting. They're releasing movies by big name guys like this. Yeah. In January and February, it shows that they're kind of trying to get back to yeah. their former yeah. status. And another thing about this movie, uh, Stallone needs to get off the HGH. It is disgustingly. <laughs> yeah. He has obvious. not aged well. He has not aged it well. Is the guy's rough. got more veins popping out of him than than uh, Skeletor did in He Man. <laughs> he looked like Barry Bonds, two thousand three. Okay, yeah. is oh. that? Yeah. And the only difference is he's thirty years older than Barry yeah. Bonds was in two thousand three. Yeah. yeah. I do want to make one comment. You know, uh, you notice I have. It's Super Bowl weekend coming up. The Raiders. Yes. Yeah. I got my team on. Got my team on. And you know where I am. I'm on the sidelines again. My team again. lost in the playoffs, Falcons, yeah. so I'm not even representing. So, so. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as we go into the review, getting into the theater, we're getting into the review, uh, I'm going with San Francisco by three. You know what? I'm taking Ravens by seven. Young quarterback. I look for mistakes. Ravens by seven. Okay. Next week, we'll see if our – our, uh, our prognostication, like that word, prognostication. prognostication. Well, to see if our prognostication is the source to watch this show. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Days, huh? of, of football <laughs> is anywhere like our movie reviews. Yeah, there you go. Maybe not. Maybe so. Maybe so. We'll see. But anyway, here we are with Bullet to the Head. Well, this was not Rocky Balboa. And nowhere in the movie did he go, Yo, Adrian, I did it. But he did a lot. One of the things that kind of stands out in this movie is that the best actor in the entire movie was Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> when Stallone is the best actor in the movie, you know there's not a whole lot of acting going on because Stallone is Stallone. But I'll give him this. He, he developed a, decent, a character that fit with what the movie needed for this particular kind of movie. He's a, he plays a hitman, professional hitman. It's really gritty. Thoroughly enjoyed one one complete aspect of it. It's uh, filmed in uh, starts off in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and heads on down the Crescent City down to uh, New Orleans, and uh, it's got a fantastic blues soundtrack that plays all the way through the movie. I enjoyed the soundtrack as much as uh, much or more than I enjoyed the movie. It's had some some great blues riffs in there, but. Uh, Stallone is, uh, is, is in a situation where his partner gets killed, and then he's going to go after the guys that, are his part that, that got his partner. Uh, and he got double-crossed in the course of a, a hit. And then this Chinese, or excuse me, Korean, uh, cop shows up from Washington, D.C., following up on a lead about the guy that they actually were sent out to kill, and uh, becomes his partner. Now, I don't know where they found this Korean guy, but they can lose him. Because he was nothing. You could actually put a cardboard figurine in the car with Stallone and get just as good an action as you did with this Korean guy. He was deadpan, dead nothing. He didn't know how to deliver a line. He, he acted, tried to act like a tough guy and looked like a wimp holding a gun. Christian Slater makes his return to the screen after like 400, 400 years in drugs. And uh, he, uh, he did good for what he had to do. He was a wimpy, high-class lawyer, and when it came time for begging for his life, nobody can beg for his life better than Christian Slater, and he still got his head blown off. So, hey, uh, 
all in all, it was uh, it was different than the other outings between Arnold and uh, Parker, which was uh, Jason Statham. This was very gritty, very very dark, uh, a little off, a little different kind of uh, venue for Sylvester Stallone because he's usually the, the 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 hero in the movie, and this time he's kind of the anti-hero. So uh, I'm going to give it a good solid three stars though, because for what it was. They did put a deliver, a, a, you know, a decent package in the movie. It's well worth watching, and it uh, gives you something different than what you did with the other ones. Now we'll see if he can beat Stallone, uh, beat Schwarzenegger, and uh, Statham at the box office this weekend. Um, this movie was kind of interesting on a lot of different areas. Uh, one thing that Ken touched on, don't need to reiterate much, is that the acting was pretty poor across the board with a lot of the actors. Stallone was the best actor in the movie. Kind of funny at times. I mean, it's a couple times you laughed at some of the stuff he said. And I thought Stallone, for what kind of movie it was, actually did a fair job of acting. But uh, that's about all you're going to get out of Stallone. The other characters that surround him in this movie, with especially his Korean partner, if you want to call him a partner, it's not really a buddy cop film or anything like that, but his partner was just awful. The girl from Hansel and Gretel and this guy ought to get together and do a silent film. They're that bad. Um, one thing to say about the director of this movie, Walter Hill, who is most famous for his buddy cop movie, 48 Hours. I kind of got the feeling he was trying to recapture some of that magic with this movie, making an anti-buddy cop film or whatever. Like with 48 Hours, you've got the criminal, you've got the cop working together. The only problem was... One of the parties can't act or isn't funny at all. So the other actor has to try to carry it. Um, for me, I'm going to give it, I'll give it two and a half stars out of five. Um, there were some other things in the film that just bothered me about the, the way it was filmed, the cinematography of it. It was real gritty at first. We're watching on a very 4K projection here. And I felt like Walter Hill hadn't made a movie in 13 years, and maybe some of that high-def stuff has passed him by. Uh, the guy's an excellent producer, has made some decent films in the 80s. This kind of feels like an 80s film that's very 48-hour-ish. So if you like that kind of thing, you're going to like Bullet to the Head. If that's not your thing like me, you're probably going to be kind of bored halfway through the movie. But it all came to an end and had an interesting ending, so I'm going to give it two and a half out of five. So there you go. Two and a half, three, yeah. bullet to the head. It's, it's, it's worth going to see, it really. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, you can see it once, and you're yeah. probably going to see this movie on cable soon. Yeah. Like, right after the DVD comes out, soon after, like, FX will play it or something. It's one of those kind of movies. Yeah. And, and if you're a Stallone fan, you're going to enjoy seeing Stallone on the film, on, on the screen again. <laughs> he has some funny one-liners that all of us, I think, laughed at, yeah. you know? Yeah. But he was the ultimate tough guy, and, but... It's so rough looking at his arms. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, oh, I know. And when geez, he took it, man. the one time his shirt was off, they, they, I guess, I think the reason that they actually put this elaborate tattoo on him was to cover up some of the veins. I hope so. Because he was just, tell you why, veins dude. are popping out all over the place. It looks like he's got tapeworms crawling up his <laughs> arms, man. It's nasty. <laughs> yeah. He's got to stop with that HGH, uh, man. He's too old for that. Yeah, he, he doesn't need to do that. Because the guy, the guy has always been in shape, and he's always been in these hard, yeah, hard 60, riding movies. you got to let it go. you got to let it go sometime. Exactly. Six, six, actually, 64. You gotta let, it's time to look, still on. It's time to let it go. You're gonna have a heart attack on that stuff. Yeah. 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 Go join Schwarzenegger in the nursing home movie the next time he does it. You Why guys not? take over a nursing home and just have a good time, you know, gumming your oatmeal. Get Eastwood up, do Space Cowboys too. There's no yeah. shame in that. There you go. There you go. So uh, next week, uh, we're going to be taking a look at Identity Thief with Jason Bateman. Right. And this will be our first comedy. Right, it will be, but you know, I'm a big fan of Arrested Development. Yeah. And I really this like This looks like it's going to be fun. And then, I mean, Jason Bateman is a funny guy, and a lot of the movies he's been in, even though they're one of the greatest movies, ever, have been funny. This looks like it has a good premise. Yeah. Hopefully, it doesn't turn into a Saturday Night Live movie yeah. on us where it just yeah. drops. This one's going to be one of two things. I see it as either a really funny movie all the way through, or one of those where all of the funny scenes are in. The previews. And that's a possibility, that's a possibility with comedy yeah. sometimes. But uh, one thing about the movie, it does not have a Thursday night premiere. No. So we're going to have to do it like Friday during the day. Mm -hmm. and So the review will maybe get up Friday get up evening. Later yeah, or instead something. Instead of Friday yeah. morning. We'll, we'll morning. have it up. Yeah. If you check by, I know, I know that we'll have it up Friday night, yeah. Saturday morning. We'll keep you up to date and let you know. Right. Also, this week, uh, in conjunction with the Super Bowl, we're going to be sharing with you our 
top five sports films. I'm going to be doing mine this week, and right. Oliver's going to be doing his next week, and we're also going to see which one of us picked the Super Bowl winner. I think oh, okay. And I know it's going to be me. San I'm Francisco, I'm picking Ravens. So. Hey, i got to go with the Bay, okay? You know. Go, yeah, that's right. You're from the Bay. There you well, go. There you go. I Raiders, understand that. Bay Area. I had, a, I had a lady today, actually, I guess, you know, she was like in her 70s or something like that. She's obviously not a football fan because she wished me luck this weekend. I guess she thought oh, San Francisco, you know, Bay Area, Silver Oakland, and black. San Francisco, same thing. You know. Silver and black looks very close to yeah. red and gold, doesn't <laughs> yeah, it? That's yeah. right. Maybe she's colorblind. Yeah, it's all well. <laughs> so anyway, until next week, this is Fat Guys at the Movies. I'm Ken. I'm Oliver. Goodbye.